We are reading from Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sunidhi, continuing verse 18 about the seven oceans. Srimati is the ocean of Lavanya. Srila Rupa Goswami defines Lavanya as follows in his Ujvala Nilamani. The luster that gushes out of each bodily limb, like the luster shining from inside pearls, is called Lavanya. Srimati is the ocean of Lavanya. Or elegance. The fish like eyes of Mohan, who is called Lavanya Sada, Sada, the essence of Lavanya or elegance. In Srimad Bhagavat, never get tired of swimming in the ocean of Sri Radha's Lavanya. Indeed, his desire to swim in that ocean simply increases. Sripad Bilmavangala Thakur said in Krishna Charitamrita, Lavanya Mrita Vichi Lolita Darsham. Krishna's eyes billow on the waves of nectarian Lavanya. Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj writes in his Saranga. Rangada commentary on this verse. Sri Krishna's eye, Sri Krishna's eyes have become very thirsty after the nectar waves of Sri Radha's Lavanya. Because Mohan is intoxicated by seeing Radha's Lavanya and her maidservants and girlfriends are intoxicated by seeing Mohan looking at Radhika like this, the ocean of Lavanya is compared to the third cosmic ocean, the ocean of wine. The practicing devotees should also forget everything related to this world or the next world 
and become intoxicated by worshipping the lotus feet of that Sri Radha. Sri Radha. <laughs> uh, why now we come to the the sixth? Mm. We finished that fifth mm. ocean of wine. Yeah. Compared to the ocean of Lavanya. Intoxicating. So this is the yeah because of that intoxication by seeing this. And not only the Lavanya of Shirata, but also to seeing how intoxicated is Mohan when he is looking at her. Mm. It's very nice description. I feel that from a pearl inside is a, it's a natural shining. It looks that it comes from inside, right? If you look a pearl, a pearl, a natural pearl that uh, seems that it shines from inside. So, uh, this is the example for this Lavanya and also its elegance. And practicing devotee should forget everything related to this world and the next. <laughs> So this world finish and there is no more next world like this. So we, we will not enter a new body in this world. That means we finish this material life and by Forget this world and the next material world will be finished when we become intoxicated by worshipping the lotus feet of Shirata. Mm. In that case, we will enter the eternal abode, finish this world. There is no more meaning and this following is also finished. No more reincarnation. There is only one, one more incarnation is coming. And we start with this incarnation just now when we read this. We enter a monetary body. Because of this intoxication, the fifth ocean of Radhika Slavanya is compared to this ocean of wine. Yeah. Perhaps also we could say the forget everything related to this world and the next means to not bother for the present or the future. Just surrender to Radharani's lotus feet, move from this position, from the controller, away from the controller. Right. 
There is no future here. The sixth ocean. Sri Radha is the ocean of Amrita Chabi Rupa. Chabi? Chabi Rupa, is that right? Chabi. Chabi. Yeah, okay. She is the very form of glowing nectar and her form is like a vast ocean. She is Mahabhav personified and Mahabhav is compared to nectar. It is the deepest possible love for Mohan. And Radha's form reveals this beauty and tastefulness to the utmost. Therefore, she is the Amrita Chabi Rupa Sindhu. Although Sri Krishna inundates the world with a mere drop of his beauty, even he drowns in the nectar ocean of Radha's form. Krishna says in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Although my form defeats millions of cupids, is unrivaled in its sweet in its sweetness, and pleases all the three worlds. My eyes are still pleased by seeing Radha. In this way, I am the cause of joy to the world. But Radhika's form and attributes are my very life. Because the ocean of Radha's form is so sweet, it is compared to the second cosmic ocean the ocean of sugarcane juice. The seventh ocean. Srimati is the ocean of, of playfulness. Which means 
her frolics with her beloved Shamsundra. She keeps Shamsundra immersed in what the wake. Frolics? Frolics? What is this? Mm. Like joyfully playing, I would say, like skipping, frolicking through the lightly dancing around, frolicking through the forest. It's from the German word. Yeah, there we go. Fröhlich. Hmm? It's from the German word fröhlich. 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 Frolic. Frolicking is being fröhlich. Fröhlich. Oh. Nice. <laughs> 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 she keeps Shamsundra immersed in the waves of the ocean of her pastimes when she meets him. When the waves of Madana Rasa swell in the ocean of Sri Radha's pastimes, even Sri Krishna the transcendental, youthful Cupid of Vrindavan does not dare to place his boat-like heart on its surface. Just as a boatman fearfully keeps his boat on the bank of the Ganga, when her huge waves meet the ocean. This ocean of play is compared to the first cosmic ocean, the ocean of salt water. Because although the very sight of this ocean destroys all sins, a person who drinks its water will die. <laughs> Similarly, when one faithfully chants and hears about the pastimes of Radha and Mohan, one will become free from all sins and from the heart's disease of lust. But when one tries to imitate these pastimes, these Leelas also, not these Leelas. Mm. When one tries to imitate these Leelas, one will perish. This is an important point. It's, uh, I think in the past, and uh, there are devotees who try to imitate the Leela 
uh, and uh, man uses uh, female clothes. I heard about this and brings a great confusion in this uh, what is given by Mahaprabhu. They imitate the Leela. Because they are mixed this with lusty desires. Outsidely they are jumping in the clothes of ladies and inside they are full of lusty desires. So it is a need to change from inside the identification of from lust to love. And this is only possible by changing this bodily identification from a male body that is including a, a, a material female body. These are all male bodies, full of desires. So we have to really change, give up all desires in this world and enter the spiritual body of a manjari, then we can start. And then we start faithfully chanting and listening about the lila of Radha and Mohan. Then we will become free from all sins and from the heart's disease of lust. So it's, uh, we cannot imitate and this is uh, the blessing of the Guru, he will take care of us, that we go the right way and not start with imitating something we are not. May I ask something? Yeah. I want to ask like how to give up because what I can observe in myself like the strong urges of lust and desire and it's there and um, to ignore them or to be natural with them and over time i develop higher taste and then they will naturally fall away that's a good question and this question will come to every one of us and Gurudev is explaining this. It is uh, like going to toilet. You cannot stop going toilet. <laughs> that <laughs> creates some problem, right? If you stop this. <laughs> but there is no need to live on toilet. <laughs> This <laughs> is such a, a nice example he always make. So there is a need in the material body and we have to balance this. And for this it's uh, maybe needed to live uh, in a, uh, in a, in a ashram, Krihasta ashram. That means in a relationship this is more balanced than to live as a monk or a nun in this 
Kali Yuga is very hard, especially in the young age. So, if you try to balance this material desires, but you not need to live in the in this uh, lusty world. That is the meaning behind the explanation of Gurudev. Go toilet and come back, finish. No meaning of this. That's a, yeah. But inside, you are identified with with your spiritual identification. As Manjari. Yeah. I feel like that's the that's the point is to be able to feel the material desires, acknowledge when they're there, but then also not associate with them in the way that these are who I am. Remembering who we are in our constitutional position and then acknowledging, oh, I have like this material desire is currently covering me and acknowledging that, but not saying this material desire is who I am. <clears throat> you cannot uh, give why. Sorry, sorry. Udava, no, go please. <laughs> go ahead. Hmm? I'm listening. Yeah, otherwise you give uh, violence to your body. And then you, and also to your mind. And then uh, 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 you, you become sick, your mind, and maybe also body. Yes. This is confirmed in the last verses of the Rasa Leela narration in the Srimad Bhagavat. Even in one's mind, a non God should not imitate these pastimes of Sri Krishna. A fool who does so will destroy himself. He can, after all, also not drink the poison from the ocean of milk as Lord Shiva did. We remember this. We remember this explanation of the churning of the milk ocean. You remember? Mm. And then the first what came was poison. 
and uh, out of compassion and mercy, Lord Shiva took this poison and put it in his throat. And then it became blue. So here it's described that we cannot imitate this. A non-god, so he is also like a god. He can do what we cannot do. Yeah. Sripad Rupa Goswami wrote in his Ujvala Nilamani, a person who desires auspiciousness should act like a devotee. He should never imitate Krishna in his amorous deliances. This is the purport of all the scriptures. I heard that Bhaktisiddhanta in his time that was very prominent this imitation and he tried to stop this. Bhaktisiddhanta who is the the teacher, the, the guru of Srila Prabhupada. Gurudev, you are there? So that was uh, a real was uh, a störung disturbance, a, a real disturbance to the devotees in that time that they are using women clothes and reading the scriptures, and they are imitating this the lila of. Mohan, in the way that they are fulfill his lust, their lusty desires, and use the scriptures for this. And in this way, they they drink this poison, what will uh, what will destroy themselves. And so that we have to, to understand really, never imitate this. We cannot stay in this material lusty desires and enter the Leela. That will never happen. We will stay forever in the lust. We have to change in the, in the love, in the real love. And so we have to become Manjari. First, we have to understand the soul level, that we are not this body. What is Prabhupada also explaining that this is what we have to learn from his books, that we are not this body, but we are a eternal soul. And then the next step, this is actually what Gurudev explain us. We start then on the soul level as Gopi, and then in the next step, we are, uh, by mercy of Gurudev, we are 
entering in the Manjari bar. So we exactly know who we are and we exactly know to whom we are searching for. This is Radharani, the source of love. And then we change our behave from lust to love, from material body to spiritual body, from controlling mood to service mood, from controller to absolute truth. This is possible by the mercy of Gurudev and his blessings. Without Guru is not possible. He is inviting us like Mahaprabhu did when he teach Rupa and and then Rati Manjari. There, our line starts there, and so we are very blessed by this. And I can feel that if uh, Bhakti Siddhanta and Prabhupada will listen our class here, I feel that they will be also very happy about our topics we can get and how deep we're driving in this uh, beautiful uh, topics. The darkness of despair in Sripad's heart over his own unworthiness is destroyed by the light of Srimati's sweet attributes. Sripad thinks, Oh, Swamini, I am completely unable to serve you with expertise. How can I become qualified to join your expert maidservants? You are the ocean of cleverness. Please make me a qualified maidservant by teaching me this expertise in service. Anurag is also required with that expert service Otherwise, 
That service cannot make you happy. You are the ocean of Anurag. So please make me qualified by giving me one drop of this Anurag. Although I am the most wretched of the wretched, you are the shoreless ocean of motherly affection. Please sprinkle me with just one drop of that Vatsalia affection to keep me with your lotus feet. What an audacity. Although I am so unqualified, still I have the courage to pray for Srimati's service and her motherly affection. She's not only the ocean of Vatsalya, she's also the ocean of great mercy. She will surely bestow her mercy on fallen souls like me. When Sripad becomes aware of Srimati's compassion, he forgets about his own unworthiness and he prays for entrance into the oceans of Srimati Lavanya forms and pastimes. Such eager prayers will unlock the chains of Srimati's compassion. That is the essential teaching for the devotees here. Thus ends verse 18. I was offline. Sorry. No problem. We can read it again. It was beautiful, actually. The I was feeling that um, Anandadas Babaji here gives us such a beautiful conclusion and so much mercy by showing us an example in how to pray and how to approach um, these beautiful qualities that he describes of, of Swaminis and, and how to incorporate those into, into our prayers to become her 
expert maid servant. Yes. The darkness of despair in Sripad's heart over his own unworthiness is destroyed by the light <laughs> of Srimati's sweet attributes. Sripad thinks, Ah, Swamini, I am completely unable to serve you with expertise. How can I become qualified to join your expert maidservants? You are the ocean of cleverness. Please make me a qualified maidservant by teaching me this expertise in service. Anurag is also required with that expert service. Otherwise, oh, I think you, you, you lost one line, huh? Maybe. Otherwise, that service cannot make you happy. Hmm. The anurag is also required with that expert service. Oh, maybe, yeah. Otherwise, that service cannot make you happy. Anurag um, has been described here recently as being ever fresh. And I've also heard it described, correct me, because this might be wrong, as, um, as being a loving exchange. So rag is like love going one way, and anurag is this two-way loving exchange. Mm. I feel that that to me that description fits well here. That translation fits well here because the maid servant can't just be expert in her service; she has to also offer the service with love. We can be we can be expert in a service, and we see this in the material world. But if we're detached from that service and who we're giving it to, then the service won't please Swamini. It has to be done with this loving mood, so that this anurag, this loving exchange, can exist. And without that that loving mood, um, it doesn't matter how expert the service is, it cannot make Swamini happy. Mm. And she is the source of this anurag. So Tripad is praying to her with the following line. You. Yes. We oh, need to pray this. We do the same way. Mm. We have the same. Uh, so I completely unable to serve you with expertise. How can I become qualified to join your expert maidservants? This is also our prayer. Hmm? Isn't it? Yeah. Please make me a qualified maid servant by teaching me this expertise in service. I mean, the maidservant, they have so many qualities. 
and they are so expertise in every to string garlands, to play different instruments by singing, preparing the kunja, so many, many, many unbelievable, many things. They are expert in the seva. And so who can say that he is in it? So no one, but by praying to her, we will become, every one of us can become this expert of service. So again, we are on the level of mercy. Yeah. I feel too in the for for our prayers, the first line, my eyes just jump back to the first line, um where Anant Das Babaji is describing the the mood that we should be approaching these prayers in. When he says Sripad's heart is in despair over his own unworthiness. So we should have this this extremely humble, this um this attitude that Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu writes in Shikastakam about being the, the most humble, most tolerant, coming from the lowest place and approaching these prayers with this, with this mentality. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, on, on that comment, uh, I also feel though that it uh, kind of say that there's a darkness of despair of that. So maybe we can go into a loop of an unworthiness as well. But there's so many is saying we have the, um, that light and beauty of the pearl that she, in her merciful and um, that state of wanting to give the her manjuris that opportunity which they seek in that despair um that she destroys that darkness yeah so that's like yes something that i was thinking yeah about. totally mm -hmm. that, that's a beautiful point not to get stuck in that despair yeah. where i'm like oh i'm unqualified i'm unworthy there no you know we would say like hope there's no hope for me mm -hmm. it's like it's beautiful because he gives us the attitude to maybe the mood to um approach it but then also tells you like hey you know there's yeah no worries there's light at the end of the tunnel like there's there's hope here through yeah through these prayers that's a beautiful beautiful point to keep us from getting stuck in this darkness You are the ocean of Anurag. So please make me qualify by giving me one drop of this Anurag. Although I am the most wretched of the wretched, you are the shoreless ocean of motherly affection. Here we remember Gurudev's words from yesterday. How sweet he explained this. motherly affection of Swamini towards us. This feeling of a baby we have. And how she is feeding us with her own breast 
and uh, she has opened his breast to us. But Krishna, he will, she will not do like this. Gurudev is explaining, he has to do. She is not open by her. But to the babies, she is freely opening this because there is no distance in any kind. It's a very beautiful relationship, unique. And I never heard this like from Gurudev, this beautiful, how he is explaining this, isn't it? And yesterday we was very deep in these feelings. He brought us there. Close to Swamini's motherly affection to, towards the Manjaris. Although I'm so unqualified, still I have the courage to pray for Shimati's service and her motherly affection. Gurudev, are you there? Hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rade. No one can explain this so beautiful, Gurudev. What? Motherly affection of our Swamini towards the yeah. maid servants. We just read this, uh, Mahatmaji read this. Also, I am not qualified, still I have the courage to pray for Swamini's service and her motherly affection. Only two things. Mm. Only, only the motherly service. Then service will automatically come. Yesterday we were so deep in this feeling mm. of baby. Mm. <laughs> you make this. You make all of us to babies. <laughs> <laughs> you make us. <laughs> mm.
She is not only the ocean of Vatsalya, she is also the ocean of great mercy. <laughs> she will surely bestow her mercy on fallen souls like me. Some light in the dark. Yeah. Other than that. Mahatmaji, you like to continue? Yeah. We were just um, sharing shortly here that the, the prayer is full, full of hope. Every every line is saying, even though I'm unqualified, you have this quality to save me, even though I am the most wretched of the wretched. You have the, the deep ocean of compassion to save me. All of these qualities, all of these um, unworthy, these feelings of unworthiness and these attributes that we have, Srimati has, um, we see in this prayer, has a quality and attribute to blow away the darkness with her light to blow away our darkness with with her light and this prayer is really giving us so much hope in that in that step that Gurudev always describes faith and then hope and this is to me just like a full um kind of feeling filled prayer about that that inspires a lot of hope for a fallen soul like me. Yeah. The, again, we are on this that we are baby. Uh, what is a baby? Is it completely helpless? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are helpless. Sure, we are very helpless. We are not helpless. Only we are. We are very helpless. Without mercy, nothing can move. Yeah. This is where we start, right, Gurudev? We start in that helplessness. Helplessness. Mm. Mm. Only the hope that Gurudev is with me. Mm. Yeah. He will take care for us in marginal condition. And marginal in independent. Yeah. With the first ego. With the covering. Mm. So much condition here. Yeah. Mm. And we yeah. don't want to leave this. Mm. We want to be in condition and do this. That is not possible. No. Here we start as baby. We cannot, we will not start as experts. We have to become child, baby. Right, right. Then we can see the absolute truth. Yeah. Uh, 
and by mercy she will teach us. And this mercy is actually the Guru. Yeah. Mm. So beautiful. And we read today also that we cannot imitate this. No. There is a, even in one's mind, a non-God should not imitate this Leela of Shri Mohan. No. A fool who does a fool who does so will destroy himself. He can, after all, also not drink poison from the ocean of milk, as Lord Shiva did. And Rupa Goswami wrote in his Ujwala Lilamrita, Nilamani, sorry, a person who desires auspiciousness should act like a devotee. He should never imitate Mohan in his amorous alliance. This is the purpose of all the scriptures. Yeah. So this is uh, because lust. I have to give up this material identification. <laughs> we cannot enter the Leela with our lusty bodily desires. This we have to leave far behind and enter the spiritual body of Manjari. There was a nice uh, question of our Harina Prashad. Maybe Harinam, you like to again to ask? Yes, because uh, with this theme, like I feel strong urges in me of desire and lust. And I asked, like, to how to let go of it or how to give up and is it like a natural way that through higher taste they will naturally fall off or do i still act for them until um yeah they naturally fall off So desire is there, right, Gurudev? Mm. Body is there, even especially in young age. Mm. So, and then I, or we give this uh, example of yours that we many times heard that about the toilet, we need to go toilet, but not to live there. Mm. Right? Actually, very easy process is this, that what I feed myself. If I feel that I'm a plastic body and I'm, my false ego is too high, then he will keep distance from the spiritual life. I will show outside that I am in a, a spiritual life, but my sanskara mm. is only to, to be a material body. 
we will not accept, accept ourselves that we are baby, we are child. Mm. It's acceptance. Mm. Mm. If you not feel child, you cannot talk about the breast of anyone. You cannot right. say that mother opened the buttons of the breast mm. and the lover has to open the button for her. Beloved, mm. beloved, not open the buttons for the lover. Mm. You cannot talk this thing without becoming child. You yeah. have to feel it, you have to practice it. And the, the day you fix this desire, all done. Oh. And the goal is only you. Then nothing is coming. I am feeling this sitting in Delhi. This is my sadhana and checking myself. What is happening? Mm. <laughs> when Sripad becomes aware of Srimati's compassion, he forgets about his own unworthiness and he prays for entrance into the oceans of Srimati's Lavanya forms and pastimes. Mm. Such eager prayers will unlock the chains of Srimati's compassion that is the essential teaching for the devotees here. Eager prayers. Mm. Eager. Mm. This this is the mm. secret. No? We have to be very eager mm. and pray to our Swamini and then her mercy will come. Right. Yeah. The, the, good if you're still in Delhi. Yes, sir. My God. Every day I'm thinking that I will go, but I not drive nowadays. I'm very in uh, handicap because some has to do that. Or I have to arrange the taxi. Raja and Priyas also want to go with Nama. They are both there, no? Yesterday I listened, I heard his voice. Priyash was back. Both are here. Oh. So I'm waiting for their mercy. 
Yeah, if, if it's if you wait two more days, I will come. Yeah, <laughs> no, I will receive you, my lad. <laughs> You are coming on 24th. Yes. Today is 21st. <sighs> so I will order a big taxi, Gurdiv. <laughs> How many are coming? So these are Suniti and me, and then uh, my friend Mike with Imke. Four. 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 We, we will come in two taxi. Hmm. Hmm. Good. But I will bring a big taxi, you know. Hmm. Ah, comfortable. Maybe there is, there is for sure, there's more space with it. No, actually, I have to go to the 24th. I have to be there. In today, today they can see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. So now we we finished this beautiful verse eighteen. Uh -huh. That was a, a great explanation of this uh, oceans, mm. different oceans of Shirata compared to the oceans of the material world. Mm. When will Shirata, who is an ocean of cleverness, an ocean of anurag rasa, mm. an ocean of motherly affection, an ocean of very deep compassion, <clears throat> an ocean of elegance, a nectar ocean of glistening transcendental forms, and an ocean of play be manifest in my heart. That was the verse. And the ocean of cleverness mm was compared to the ocean of sweet water. Mm. And the ocean of Anurag, mm. I will try to find. No. Yeah. Was compared to the ocean of milk. And the ocean of Vatsalia, I think it was the third, mm. is compared to the ocean of yogurt. <coughs> And Radhika's ocean of compassion 
It's compared to the ocean of clarified butter. It's melting. Then we must read about, about the ocean of Lavanya. Mm. This is uh, compared to the ocean of wine, I think, right? And the sixth ocean of Sri Radhika, the ocean of Amrit, Chabi, Rupa, the very form of glowing nectar is compared to the second cosmic ocean, the ocean of sugarcane juice. And then the seventh ocean of our Swamini is the ocean of playfulness. Playfulness. And with what ocean is sweet water, right? Is compared to that ocean? So now we have the seven oceans of our Swamini compared to the seven ocean of this universe. A very nice verse. Rather, Rather good. Yeah. So many beautiful qualities of our Swamini. Say something. So nice to, so nice to be together, Gurudev. We feel this that we are together with you now. Should we bring some bagels? <laughs> Zuniti is asking, should we bring some bagels? No. No? No? No, no more bad. bagels? I think... Uh, I will say anything. Uh, 
Ja. ja. Was ist da? Everything is empty. Oh. No desires. Oh. How to serve a person who has no desires? That's not easy, good. <laughs> Only one desire is left. I think it's too late to start with a new verse, right? It's too late. No? And uh, we will stay in the in this beautiful 18th verse. Yeah. And meditate on the beautiful different oceans of Swamini's qualities. It's very beautiful. And the prayers of Prabhupada Chief. How he is uh, showing us how to behave to enter in this mood of the manjari. Ha Swamini, I'm com completely unable to serve you with expertise. How can I become qualified to join in your expert maid servants? You are the ocean of cleverness. Please make me a qualified maid servant by teaching me this expertise in service. Ah. This is also our prayer. She is te he or she is teaching us how to pray. It's an eager, eager prayer for the Seva. Man. Yeah. And now you say, Gurdiv, we are never alone. We need eagerness to develop our sarupavis. Yeah. Without eagerness, it's not coming. Only greedy person can get it. Yeah. And we need Guru Manjari. Both. Mm -hmm.
And how to intensify this greed, this eagerness, Gurudev? How to? How to? By association. By association. Mm -hmm. Now in my association, that eagerness is coming. Mm -hmm. And two things to fix, Gurudev. This is really our own who I am and who is my Ishta Dev. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many times you explain this point. Yeah. Thank you, Gurudev, that, that, that you are always with Sri us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Radhe Radhe, Dhanavad. Dhanavad, Gurudev. Dhanavad, devotees. Dhanavad, Dhanavad. Dhanavad. So happy. Dhanavad to all. Radhe. We love you very much, Gurudev. We miss you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, thank you. Many was this morning here. Yeah. Your class, so beautiful coming. <laughs> no, not my class, good. Yeah, my dear. Mahatma. Mahatma is. Mahatma is. It's so good. I love to listen. Uh, more and more connection is coming, good. If I feel you, this is my good luck, our good luck. Uh, like you are teaching us to be with our Guru Dev always in the heart connected. This is our hope that we are coming in this, like you. With your guru, you always say you, you never separate from him, no? I never, when some guru say I meditate in my guru. You never separate from... Never, never. Radha Govindadas Babaji. Never. He and guru, never. Wow. It's a good feeling. Beautiful. Radhe Radhe, Dhanavad. Dhanavad. <laughs>